Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Janet. Hey, Chala and Odell. Yo, B. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Tam. Hey, Demi. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Hi, LaShanta. Hey, Bessie. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Hey, KC. Hey, Sharon. Hey, my love. I got your message. Thank you so much. Hey, Sharon Oglesby. I was talking about Sharon Jones. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. I love that. Like, I love when you guys say good morning, LMJ Coffee and Conversations family. We are a family. That is our truth. Like, we become, we have become this family of believers um, sharing in the word of God. And I just think that is so awesome and so dope. Um, like it is like, it's just simply amazing. The family of believers that we've come in this group. Hey, Miss Pat. Um, it's just been, it's just been exciting. It's been exciting to watch this grow March 6th. I believe coffee and conversations will be one years old or one year old because it's not it's just that one year so we'll be celebrating big for coffee and conversation one year one year isn't that something one year we've been doing this and some of you have been on here for one year so good morning welcome to coffee and conversation thank you for joining us i am lakeisha johnson your host for today and I'm so blessed by you being here. My t-shirt today says Faith Just Live By It. It's a bling t-shirt. Um, DPW Serenity. If you're looking for a little bling in your life, that's a good place to get it. And everybody knows how I feel about coffee mugs. My coffee mug, this one says Nerds Rule. And I am a nerd. Like, that's the most amazing part that I'm a nerd. I always say I'm a nerd girl. My my life is full of books. Aw, oh, Tanisha, that's so dope. You made it live. Woo, woo, woo. Little celebrations. Let me pray for you so that we can get started in the lesson for today. Hey, uh, do not all oh, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um I don't like share the video live. Just click share, drop it in someone's inbox. Add it, do whatever you did, whatever you need to do. Make sure you share the video live right now. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for your word that was divinely inspired, that was already written from the foundation of the world, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that the word of God is infallible, that it's true, that the promises are yes and amen, Lord God. We thank you for this word to encourage us. We thank you for this word to groom us. We thank you for this word to give us wisdom. We thank you for this word to give us peace. We thank you for this word to give us joy. We thank you for this word to teach us long suffering. We thank you for this word to teach us self-control. We thank you for the word that builds us up. We thank you for the word that grooms and prunes us. We thank you for the word sown into us so that it can be multiplied for your kingdom alone. Bless the people today. Let it not fall on deaf ears. Let it be implanted in their hearts, Lord God, so that they can go and multiply for your kingdom alone. Lord God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. We thank you for the word today. Holy Ghost, go before us. Do a work in us and all around us. Lord God, just visit us. You said you inhabit the praise of your people. And Lord, we just bless you. We need you to inhabit us today. Jesus, do the greater work in us like only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Hey man, if you're just logging on, oh, thank you, Miss Marceline, for sharing the video. If you're just logging on, we're welcoming you today. We are about to get in the word today. And I titled this message today, A Green Thumb. And we're actually going to talk about sowing and reaping. I woke up this morning with sowing and reaping sowing and reaping on my heart and I just began to go refresh myself in the scriptures but I also found some new things today um reminding me what our life is like do you know that your life is a harvest like your life is a harvest of whatever you've sown of whatever's been sown into you your life is a harvest and if you haven't realized yet that your life is a harvest, then I'm hoping today that you understand how important it is sowing and reaping, reaping is in your life. I've always said that I didn't have a green thumb. And then I realized that my green thumb didn't just apply to my ability to be able to take care of a plant. My green thumb applied to every area of my life. So if you don't have a green thumb, I'm going to pray today that you develop a green thumb. And the reason why is, is because your life is a harvest. You have to start recognizing and seeing your life as being a harvest and seeing the lives of the people connected to you as being a harvest, right? Whatever you sow and you put into the lives of others, whatever you sow and put into your own life, whatever you sow into to whatever is around you, your life is representative of a harvest of what you've been sowing. And yesterday we talked about our mouths, right? We talked about what was coming in and out of our mouths. And so we have to remember that we're reaping a harvest of the things that we sow. Can I tell you something? If you want to reap a spiritual harvest, then what do you have to do? You have to sow a spiritual seed. You cannot reap a spiritual harvest and you are not sowing, reaping, sowing spiritual seeds. You can't expect, expect God to move in some areas of your life and you're not sowing into those areas of your life spiritually, right? Harvest, harvest, sowing and reaping is natural as well as it, as it is spiritual. And so you've got to begin to recognize your life as a harvest, as a big field. And, and I'm going to tell you something. If you took a minute right now and begin to look at the evidence of your life, then you will see that your life is a harvest of the seeds that you've been sowing. When people come tell me, I don't have a, got a lot of good friends, like I don't have a lot of good friends, that's because you haven't been sowing good friendships. Your heart, your life is reflective. When I wanted good friends, I started sowing good friendships. I started being more attentive to the people around me. I started changing my behavior and how I treated those around me because I wanted good friends. And because I wanted good friends, I started sowing into good friendship. When I wanted to reap good credit, right? I started being more mindful of my money and how I treated my my credit like like you you have to understand that your life like your life is a harvest and it is manifesting what what you've been sowing into it sowing and reaping is one of the simplest most simplest but most ignored concepts in life it's the most simplest but most ignored concept in life for some reason we hear it, we read it, we talk about it, we make it relevant, but we don't make it relevant to other areas of our life. We only make it re relevant to some areas of our life. We only make sowing and reaping relevant on some areas of our life. And so I have, I have discovered we reap in the areas that we value the most. So if you don't value something, you don't sow and put the time and energy into it because you don't see the value behind it. Um, I remember some times that I tried to take care of some plants, right? Um, and But because I didn't understand the value to the plant of my house, how plants help the oxygen in your house, how greenery is good for you, I didn't take care of these plants. I was haphazardly dealing with these plants because I didn't understand the value 
value of the plants, if we don't understand the value of the words that come out of our mouth, the value of what we put into each other's lives, if we don't understand the value of people as a whole, then we don't properly sow into the people or the things connected to us. When I was growing up, my mother used to say something to me. She used to say, Lakeisha, do not burn bridges because you may have to cross back over them. When I was young and I was foolish and I was immature, I haphazardly handled the things and the people around me. And because I didn't understand that I may have to cross back over those bridges, I was not careful with the people that I was dealing with because I didn't understand that what I was sowing into those relationships may in fact impact another relationship. I was haphazardly in dealing with those relationships. So Galatians 6 and 7 says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever one sows, he shall also reap. And so if you haven't begun to understand that your life is a harvest, then you won't understand why you're reaping what you're reaping. If you don't understand if you under, don't understand that you're only attentive to one part of your garden, then your other crop will begin to fail. You can't pour and sow a significant amount of time into your kids, right? And you reap this great relationship with your kids, but you're neglectful of your marriage. See, your life is a representation of your harvest. So if there is a dry or barren place in your life, it is because you have been sowing to that area, either neglecting it, if your career is suffering, you're probably neglecting it. If your business is suffering, you're probably neglecting it somewhere. If your finances are suffering, you're probably neglecting it somewhere. For, for 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 8 says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must decide as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that you have sufficiency in everything and every good work. There is some something significant in that scripture. When God has called you to a thing, he will give you enough grace and enough seed to sow into that thing so that it can continuously reap a harvest. The problem is we run out in specific areas in our lives because because we don't understand the grace that has been abounded to us by God. God has already prepared you for what you've called. He's called you to. He'll give you enough seed. He'll provide you with the grace to sustain you. Some of you be like, oh, my plate is too full. And we use a full plate as justification to be neglectful. We use a full plate as justification to be neglectful. A full plate is never justification to be neglectful. You need to pray and get in position and ask God for the wisdom so that you can be fruitful and multiply in every area of your life. For whatever you sow into is what you are going to reap. If you sow tears, you're going to reap joy. That's scriptural. That's Psalms 126 and 5. Those who sow with tears will reap songs of joy. If you sow righteousness, you're going to reap a reward. A wicked person earns deceptive wages, but the one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. If you sow injustice, you're going to reap calamity. Whatever sows injustice reaps calamity, and the rod they wield in fear will be broken. That's Proverbs 22 and 8. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh. If you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap of the spirit. If you're looking for a spiritual harvest, you got to sow a spiritual seed. You got to sow a spiritual seed. You cannot sit around asking for the supernatural to be active in your life, but you're not sowing supernaturally. If you want to believe God for something, you got to sow into it supernaturally. Yep, his grace is there. Yep, his mercy is there. Yep, he, he reigns on the just and the unjust, but the people that you see this supernatural harvest manifesting in their life is because they've decided to sow supernatural seeds. Can I tell you what those supernatural seeds are? They're clear to us in Galatians 6 and 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Every time you sow into those, they multiply in your life. 
I tell people all the time when they say, oh, I'm struggling with self-control, so self-control somewhere, purpose to be in self-control in one particular area of your life and self-control will begin to multiply. Choose to shut your mouth and sow peace in one particular area in your life and peace will begin to multiply. Want to see your finances increase? Sow spiritually into the kingdom and your finances and watch your finances multiply spiritually. The laws of sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest have been here since the beginning of the earth. Whatever a man or one man sows, they shall reap. They should reap. It's, 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 it's fair. If your mouth is loose, you're going to reap the harvest of those loose lips. If you're around here talking about people, judgmental, critical, you don't have any compassion in you, you're going to reap a harvest behind that. You're going to reap a harvest behind that. Sow supernatural seeds if you want a supernatural harvest. There's another thing. Sow nothing and you're going to reap nothing. Then another servant came and said, sir, here is your minor. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and you reap what you did not sow. That's Luke 19, 20 and 21. Sow nothing, get nothing. Don't sow into the relationships around you and watch them die. You cannot call people good friends and you don't put time and effort into those relationships. And then you keep trying to figure out why you're lonely or why things are happening the way they're happening. Well, you hadn't put the time, the effort, the love into those relationships. And then you have to be careful in how you sow into one relationship, how it may impact another relationship that you have. Do not treat the people around you haphazardly because the harvest that is due to you may come through something else. You were great and sold into your marriage, but you didn't sow into your kids. And so the harvest that you see later may not come, may not come into fruition. So nothing, reap nothing. These all, these sowing and this reaping has been here since the beginning of the earth. So into good soil, you reap a crop. Jesus told them the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Matthew 13 and 24, sowing and reaping is infallible. It's going to happen. Whatever you're sowing today or whether or not you're sowing today, whether or not you choose not to sow into anything, whether or not you choose to be sex, self, selfless, selfish. If you choose to be selfish, if you worry about me, mine, and no more, remember that you're sowing that. It's not a matter of whether you think you are sowing or not. You're always sowing. You're always sowing. That's why you got to think about every word that proceeds out your mouth. Some of y'all post too much. Some of y'all say too much. It's not for you to worry about why somebody acts the way they act or why their life is the way that their, their life is. The only person that you're responsible for is your life. If you see a problem in someone else's life, then get in position, intercede, pray, be the example, be light, be love, and sow into their life. Some of y'all have got to spiritually hotty for yourself because you think that you have arrived and you know what that's a seed you sow into that's a seed you sow into I watched myself sow a seed into a relationship and I reaped a harvest two days later and it was a relationship that had been in jeopardy and in trouble so can I tell you something you can cause a crop failure of something negative you've sown by sowing something positive into it. Pluck that negative seed up and get some positive seed going because you're reaping. What are you sowing? When people come to me and say, I don't know why this area of my life is not working. I'm looking at them and saying, my God, what have you been sowing? What are you sowing into that area of your life? Are you sowing lies? Are you sowing negativity? Are you sowing cheating? Are you sowing destruction? What are you sowing into that area of your life? Are you sowing impurity? Are you sowing manipulation? You can't manipulate people and then expect that it's not. And manipulation is like throwing pity parties. When people throw pity parties, that's manipulation. You can't justify wrong behaviors because, you, if, because somebody else is sowing that. Then you're sowing that as well. Luke 6 and 38 says, given it will be given to you. Good measure, press down, run it over. Will it be put into your lap? For with the measure you give is the same measure is given back to you. So if there is an area in your life that you're experiencing crop failure, 
You need to figure out what you're sowing into that area of your life so that you can come back and reap a harvest. We all have green thumbs. It just is the ability of whether or not we make a decision to slow down. I want to tell you something. My, growing up, my mother had a really green thumb. She had a really good green thumb. She could make a plant grow. And as I was reflecting on her ability to make a plant grow, God showed me this morning the parallel to so many areas of her her life, where my mother was attentive in her finances, in her credit, in her career. She sowed seeds in those areas. She sowed seeds in every area that she was attentive, that she did not rush, that she paid attention to, that she put the detail in. She began to reap a harvest in those areas in your life. You cannot expect a harvest in something that you have not sold for. You cannot expect a harvest in something you have not sold for. Sow for it and watch it multiply. Well, you, you sh- watch it multiply. You cannot expect a spiritual harvest. You don't spend enough time in your word. You don't spend enough time but with God. You cannot expect a spiritual harvest in your relationship with God. And you're not sowing into it. Or you're sowing into it haphazardly. Or you're not operating in the fullness of it. It's only going to give to you what you put into it. So if it's not reaping a harvest, it's because you haven't sold much into it. You haven't put enough effort. You know why I go ham on social media? I'm posting, I'm dropping because I'm sowing into what God told me to do. I'm spending the time, the effort and energy. Any area in my life is a lack. I'm looking at it to sow into it. What do I need to sow? I saw my giving statements from last year of what I gave. So I'm, re- I'm re- expecting a hundredfold return of what I gave last year. I looked at what I sowed into the kingdom. I'm expecting a harvest off that baby. I'm expecting a harvest off what I sowed. I'm looking at the time that I've sowed into people. I'm expecting a harvest. I'm looking at the time I sowed into relationships. I'm expecting a harvest. And I'm looking at the areas in my life that aren't showing to be fruitful. And I'm expecting a harvest there too. I'm expecting a harvest there too. But I tell you what I'm going to do in the areas in which I haven't sold sold appropriately. I'm getting ready to pull up them negative weeds. I'm getting ready to pull up them negative crops. And then I'm getting ready to go replant again. I'm getting ready to go replant. I'm going to repent. I'm going to apologize to some people. I'm going to apologize to some areas. I'm going to repent and apologize to God for not being faithful with some things that he's given me. I'm going to pull up that negative harvest. And I'm going to watch God be fruitful and multiply even in an area or place where my land was barren man if my kids wouldn't sleep i'd get up and shout like i'd get up and shout but seed time and harvest seed time and harvest it's it's gonna happen it's been here since the beginning of the world but you can you can change that you have the ability to change your harvest that's the thing that i love about god second corinthians 9 10 and 11 i'm leaving you with this he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way which through us will produce thanksgiving to god if you don't think you have enough seed sow and watch him multiply so when watch him multiply and everything, if you want to see love explode in your life, sow love into someone. If you want to see you, you grow in a relationship with Christ, sow into the relationship. Spend time getting your devotional. You're reaping the harvest of whatever you sow. So can you have a green thumb? Yep, everybody can. You can have a green thumb in every area of your life, but you got to look at the barren or the dry places. Your life is your harvest and see where you're not flourishing. So that you can you can reap a harvest accordingly. Well, that's it for today. I think that's plenty for you to chew on, for you to digest on. Like for you to chew and digest on. Ask the Lord today, Lord, where are, or some of you, you already know. You've just been so resistant in doing what God has told you to do. You won't pluck those weeds up. You won't till up those lands. And that's a choice. Some of you need to ask today, Lord, show me why this area in my life is barren, it's dry, it's not wet up, it's not walking into the full uh, fullness of what it's supposed to do. He'll show you. He'll give you the tactics and tell you what to do. He'll show you where you've been planting negative seed. You got to stop resisting the Holy Spirit because for such a time as this, what you do today 
It's reaping your future. It's what's going to be determined what's happening in your future. You reap more than you sow a lot of times. So you got to ask yourself today, why, why, why is this dry? And if this is dry, what have I been sowing into it? And let me do a better thing. Well, that's it. I love you guys. Hey, I'm telling you, this was some. This was enough today. This is enough for you to chew on so you can check what, what your harvest. Check your harvest. Check your harvest. Check your harvest. Check why you're not. Watch what you're sowing into the things around you. Watch what you're sowing. Make sure you, tomorrow, you make sure, tune in to uh, my guest, the Dawsons. That's the stay page. This is going to be a great broadcast. If you don't know who they are, go to Instagram and follow them at the stay page. Go to Facebook. They're my guests tomorrow. Log on to the website. Ladies, Pillow Talk San Diego, the flyer is amazing. Go share that. Y'all, go invite someone to the page. Sometimes people want to set the notifications. You can choose to share this page with someone else. Go invite someone to the page so they can get connected to the Coffee and Conversation family. I love you so much. And you know what I'm going to tell you? You need to go be loved today. Go be loved today. Sow love into someone else so you can reap what you want. Sow, sow, sow. Stop sowing sparingly. Stop half loving people. Stop half putting into your career. Stop half putting into your business. When you get frustrated because it's not you're getting the return because you're only putting into it. You're getting the return because of what you're putting into it. Your relationships are reaping what they are because that's what you're putting in the relationship. So have, stop haphazardly handling and ask the Lord to show you how to sow spiritually, how to sow into what you need to. I'll see you back here in the morning at 8 a.m. Love, peace, and blessings.